Montreal has long been one of the best North American cities to cycle in, with its first protected bike lane open to the late 1980s. Between 2000 and 2010, the number of cyclists in Quebec has increased by 10%, and bike-to-work transportation mode share now stands at almost 10% in the Plateau Borough of Montreal. Over the past decade, Montreal has consistently added bike lanes and infrastructure to its bike network. Montreal has nearly doubled the number of kilometers of bike paths since 2005, now with 680 kilometers. Copenhagenize, a bike advocacy group, has recognized Montreal's efforts by including it on the top 20 list of bike-friendly cities. This trend is made evident by the usage of downtown bike lanes, which has increased by more than 72% between 2008 and 2012. More than 100,000 cyclists use the Deux Maisons Neuf cycle track, which is cleared of snow over the 2009-2010 winter. While some of the bicycle infrastructure has received praise, notably that present in the plateau, critics point out that it has not been replicated throughout the city, and that best practice is often ignored when designing and building the cycle network. Although Montreal has numerous bike lanes, the city has less bike lane kilometers per capita than Ottawa and Vancouver. Existing and future bike lanes need to follow high industry standards in terms of safety, ease of use, and comfort. We use NACTO, or National Association of Cycling Transportation Officials, Urban Bikeway Design Standards, to inform our decisions. These guidelines provide simple, often inexpensive, solutions to the aforementioned problems. Now we will look at some different kinds of bike infrastructure present in Montreal. The lack of bike lanes on certain corridors forces cyclists to compete for space with cars buses, and pedestrians on busy streets. This can be unsafe. Bike lanes going with the direction of traffic, often placed on busier, faster roads, cause the cyclists to be in proximity of passing cars and to be at high risk of being doored. These narrow lanes can also cause cyclists to dangerously infringe in a moving traffic lane when overtaking other cyclists or avoiding obstructions. These problems could be overcome with a painted buffer area, which could be placed on both sides of the bike lane. Widening the lane would also be beneficial. Most lanes that go against the direction of traffic, or contraflow lanes, are located between parked cars and moving traffic on calm streets. While the painted bike lane is visible to most drivers, the shadows or painted bike symbols, are likely to be overlooked. Improvements to this type of infrastructure could include placing the contraflow lane between the sidewalk and parking, or adding a painted buffer between traffic and the bike lane. Additionally, increasing shadows or other bike lane indicators in the center of the shared lane will remind drivers of the shared space. Bidirectional paths being physically separated from auto traffic provide riders with a sense of safety. Regardless, this path layout could be improved. Having a bi-directional bike path delimited by a curb narrows lanes and limits space for overtaking. These cycle tracks can also lead to awkward turns onto intersecting streets. Including a stopping area or traffic signals for cars turning off would be beneficial to cyclist safety. Bidirectional lanes would ideally be split with one on each side of the road moving with traffic. Fully segregated bike paths are generally safe due to separation from traffic. This type of bike lanes is often a victim of its own success and can be crowded with different kinds of users, including less experienced cyclists. Improvements could include widening the paths and indicating continuation of the path through intersections with thick lines or green or blue paint. Montreal, in order to continue to be considered a bike haven in North America, needs to focus on the perceived and real safety of cyclists when designing and implementing its bike network. It would be beneficial to create a rigorous set of design standards that take into account road type, traffic speed, and traffic flow. Such standards can be found in design guidelines created by organizations such as Velo Quebec and NACTO. Montreal also needs consistent investment in bike infrastructure throughout the city. It should prioritize connecting missing links throughout the network. Limiting car speed and making bike signage more visible by improving paint markings, implementing more bike boxes, and regularly maintaining the signage on the road are also important improvements. The network should also be maintained during winter so that people can continue cycling as safely as possible. A Velo Quebec study found that 70% of respondents would be more inclined to bike as a means of transportation if the roads were safer. 
Velo Quebec also found that 84% of respondents show support for having bike infrastructure in their municipality. So what are we waiting for?